Welcome back to the Blueville Podcast. Today we are joined again with Katie Winnaker for part two of Spring at the Garden Store. So Katie, what are some of the products that uh, the garden store carries for spring lawn care or spring plant care? Okay, so products for early spring. Um, when it comes to turf with well-established grass that you're not going to be seeding, people are typically looking at the five-step lawn program. That's for people that are trying to do it themselves. So if you buy three items of the five steps in one transaction, you can get 15% off regular price on those items. And there's a poster in the fertilizer room. And we can also give you a flyer at the register if it's something you want to take home and keep track of. For pre-emergent, which is your first step of the five-step lawn program that you want to put down early spring when it's starting to warm up. And I Tell people late February if it's starting to warm up because you need to stay ahead of it. Um, and then you can always reapply again later in the spring. Yeah, the time frame officially would be before the soil temperature hits 55 degrees. Some unofficial things you can look at is if you see your forsythia start to bloom, put your crabgrass preventer down. If you have a redbud tree that's blooming, put your crabgrass preventer down. Or by the calendar, if it's after April 10th, you're a little too late. so. But of course, that date can fluctuate a little bit because it's all based on soil temperature. So for the pre-emergent products we have in the store, you're looking for the Fertilum All Seasons, and that product has fertilizer in it. Um, or we have high-yield turf and ornamental weed and grass stopper with dimension. A lot of people just walk in asking for dimension. That product does not have fertilizer if you want to put the pre-emergent down, but you don't want to fertilize your lot lawn early spring so that's the difference between those two products and putting it down early spring the all seasons will last about five months is what they say and the dimension product lasts about three to four months and they use it for the pre-emergent aspects early spring trying to keep crabgrass from germinating that's the best way to keep crabgrass from coming up each year is to do the pre-emergent early spring if you can um, it won't let your grass seed germinate, so you're not supposed to be seeding if you're putting down your pre-emergent on your lawn. And then sometimes people will reapply that product mid to late spring if we've had a lot of rain to try to keep it stronger through the season. But you're trying to not put too much down too close to August if you're going to seed in the fall, which is typically your best time to seed with cool season grass. And um, we, we will also carry Howard Johnson's. That's another one that is used for pre-emergent early spring. And then a new one on the market is called Crew, and it's a pre-emergent as well. Our landscaping maintenance departments have been using that product this past year too. Um, we would have had a discussion about that on February 25th with our Cortiva rep, Jared Hoyle. Um, so if you are curious about that product, it is available in the store um, along with our other pre-emergent choices. As we move into spring a little bit further, you may see things like henbit or clover, maybe dandelions start popping up in the lawn or out in pastures. And um, when you see those types of weeds and other broadleaf weeds that aren't crabgrass, you may still need to use a contact killer on those that a pre-emergent can't stop at that time of year because of how they germinate. And that's when you're going to use a contact killer like the Furlum Weed Free Zone. That's a liquid choice that you would spray those weeds with on well-established grass or if you want a granular, it's a Fertilum weed out without fertilizer, or it does come with fertilizer if you want another fertilizer application on your lawn. Just make sure you spread out your fertilizer applications about a month apart so you don't over fertilize your grass when you're trying to use these products through the spring months. And then these are only meant for lawn areas, so things like the Fertilum weed free zone just don't get it close to plant material. It's just meant for well established grass areas. We do get a lot of questions about sand burrs. And they say you should put down a pre-emergent early spring to help keep that stuff from germinating. And so that may be something else you're looking at early spring, just using your pre-emergent products um, to see how that goes through the year as you're trying to figure out how to combat those. As we get closer to May, the next step in the five-step lawn program is your Fertilum Green Maker. It's a lawn fertilizer that they typically recommend May-June timeframe. It's a slow release fertilizer for the summer months. So through the spring months, those are the, the first couple that you're going to use. And then if you use the weed out product, trying to control 
broadleaf weeds, that may be another one you're looking at. And then on the five-step lawn program, your other products are tailored towards the fall months um, if you're looking at that chart. As far as plant products you'd be looking for in the store, uh, spring is definitely the time to be fertilizing trees and shrubs and perennials and ornamental grasses as they're starting to come out of dormancy and leaf out. Fertilone products are tailored to every need and as far as your granular fertilizer. So we've got fertilone tree and shrub food. We've got fertilone rose food. We've got a fertilone premium bedding plant food that's tailored more towards perennials. There's a fertilone gardener special that has some bedding and shrub plant labeling. It's also got vegetable labeling on there. And then there's a fertilone tomato and vegetable that's geared towards just more of like your garden plants. So there's a lot of choices and you just have to pick whichever one best suits what you're trying to fertilize. And you usually fertilize early spring and then they'll talk about doing a follow-up application early summer and you're feeding that stuff as it's coming out of dormancy, coming off of winter, and then possibly again early summer just to give it another little bit of food to help it get through the rest of the year. Fertilum tree and shrub systemic insect drench is a product that's used early spring, probably March time frame, and you apply it once a year to non-edible plants to protect them from insects like boars is what it's used a lot with. Um, you should only use this product on non-edibles, so do not apply it to fruit trees or berry type plants. It's just meant for your shade trees. So Fertilum tree and shrub systemic insect drench is used as a preventative application in the spring to help combat things like boars. There was a couple years back where we had a bigger problem with oak itch mites. And if people are still thinking about trying to combat those, you should put on a tree banding gum around the lower trunk of the tree on your oak trees. And you could do that in the spring and then you may find that you want to reapply later in the year. But that's one of their recommended suggestions for how to control oak itch mites through the year. Iron treatments you usually want to do during the cooler months. So wait till your tree is leafed out so that you can actually see the foliage and watch what happens with your iron treatment. But you'll want to do it in the spring or in the fall when it's not as hot outside. So avoid the hottest times of year. Um, our iron products are typically the chelated iron that's a liquid or we have a powder form that's iron sulfate, or some people look for our tree injection products too. So there's, about, there's three different types of iron products you might be looking at to choose from if you need to treat your plant material for iron deficiency. And sometimes people do a soil test too to see if there's something going on in the soil as well um, before they do an iron treatment. And that's may, that may be where you contact your local research and extension agent through K-State, and they can come out and do a soil test. It's a very minimal fee, and you get a very nice report with suggestions on what needs to be done in places like your gardens or your landscape beds, or if you are detecting iron chlorosis around certain trees, you may find you want to do the soil test for those as well. Another product that people need to use in the spring for a preventative application would be BioAdvanced three-in-one for roses. You'll see it in a liquid form. You'll see it in a granular form. There's even one that's a two-in-one product. But between those choices, you need to start those early spring for their preventative measures. And those are used quite a bit to help prevent black spot on rose varieties that are more susceptible. And then you still reapply it about every six to eight weeks. And you'll just check the label for the recommendations on when you apply it. But to make it work the best, you have to start that early spring as soon as the roses leaf out. And then you're, it's a preventative type product that you use through the year. Another thing that has to be done preventatively in the spring is to help control rust on certain types of plants in this area. You're looking at trying to prevent rust on your crab apples, your apple trees, your ornamental pears, hollyhock. Penstemon got rust pretty bad last year too, which was a surprise, but it, it can happen. So Fertilum F-Stop is a liquid product that is recommended for rust prevention. 
you'll start spraying preventatively as soon as those plant material leaf out. You're spraying those plants to protect their foliage from picking up the rust. Once the plants get the rust, you can't do anything about it. And trying to spray for it at that time is not going to make the rust go away. So you're having to spray preventatively for rust in the spring as soon as the plants leaf out to just try to keep the rust from getting on the foliage. It's a very common problem that we have in this part of the state because of other types of plant material that grow abundantly in this area. So it's something you definitely have to look out for each year and just know that it's something that you have to do as a preventative measure with your maintenance in your yard. And rust can be some worse some years than others due to weather conditions, which are out of our control. So you just have to know that each year you have to spray things like your crab apples, your apple trees, your ornamental pears, your hollyhock, maybe even the penstemon to help prevent them from getting the rust. Yeah, and if, if I could interject, the good news is the rust is not fatal. It just looks really, really bad. So yeah, it, it might be in your best interest to uh, get a preventative spray on there. And then sometimes if a rust is really bad, it'll cause plants to drop a few leaves through the year. And that's where they might say to fertilize your plants a little bit when that's happening to help encourage some new growth to come on, depending on if it's early summer or midsummer when you're seeing the rust. And then just rake up the leaves and try to get them out of there. It's just good control for fungus type problems that happen. Um, so those are some other things that'll come up later in the year with rust. Okay, in the spring, there's a lot of fruit tree spraying maintenance that a person needs to start if they're getting produce on their trees and they're becoming more concerned about the quality of their produce and the overall health of their fruit tree. In the winter, on a mild day, when there's time for the spray to dry and there's not much wind, uh, you want it to be just a real calm, nice, warm day. Before the tree is leafed out, you need to take dormant spray which is what we call our natural guard horticultural oil and spray your fruit trees down, just the whole tree down with that dormant oil to suffocate eggs on the tree. That's the first step they recommend to help combat problems later in the year. If you have peach trees, they want you to do a preventative spray in the winter on a mild day when there's time for the spray to dry and there's no wind and you're going to use Fertilone broad spectrum landscape and garden fungicide on the peach trees to help prevent peach leaf curl. And you have to do this before the buds pop on the peach trees. So this one's a little more time sensitive. So if you have to like decide which day to do the dormant oil and the peach leaf curl prevention spray, do the peach leaf curl prevention spray first and then do the dormant oil as soon as you can on another day so that you've spread them out a little bit and they have time to dry. The peach leaf curl prevention is important on your peach trees because if you get peach leaf curl later in the year, you can't do anything about it either. You just have to let it ride out the rest of the year. And then you know in the winter you have to spray for that preventatively to try to control that one each year. And then the third one that people are typically looking at in the spring is just your fruit tree spray products. And that's your bonide fruit tree and plant guard or your bonide fruit tree spray. They have two different products right now. The Bonide Fruit Tree and Plant Guard is their newer one that they're supposed to be moving towards um, in the upcoming years. So you might find a few differences on the label between that product and the Bonide Fruit Tree Spray. Um, but either are fine as far as just insect and disease control through the season on your fruit trees in general. So you're going to grab that bottle and check that spray chart because they have several sprays on that chart that are supposed to be done at certain points through the spring, early summer season based on how the tree is developing to help slow down insect and disease problems that may pop up on those trees. And so it's good to check with that stuff early and maybe write it down on your calendar to help you remember when you need a spray. And if you find that you need to spray more than what those labels allow, you may have to add in an additional product depending on the year and what's going on with the tree. So the dormant oil is your first product with the natural guard horticulture oil. Your second product you're thinking about is your fertilum broad spectrum landscape and garden fungicide for peach leaf curl prevention. 
And your third product is your Bonide Fruit Tree and Plant Guard or your Bonide Fruit Tree Spray. Those are all looked at early in the season um, to try to stay ahead of fruit tree maintenance and your spray schedule as you get into the first half of the year with their labels and what they suggest. And that's to, and these are all to help reduce insect problems, reduce fungus problems, and to help get you better produce as your trees are starting to put on fruit. Other things you carry in the store that people may be looking for as things are coming into spring would be like your brush and stump killer products. And um, we carry a Fertilum brush and stump control. There's a poison ivy control. There's sucker stoppers for plants, like crab apples are one that commonly get suckers that you would trim the suckers back, paint the sucker stopper on, and it helps suppress the su suckers. And you're gonna have to do that each year, but it may just help the tree look a little better. Root stimulator, we always talk about using with new plantings. And then as far as weed control, um, you're going to want to pull existing weeds in your landscape beds, but then you can apply a pre-emergent type product to suppress weeds through the open areas that you're not going to plant that could help keep your weeds down and reduce maintenance in the landscape beds. So you're looking at what we call Dimension, which is a high yield turf and ornamental weed and grass stopper with Dimension product that you can sprinkle through the open areas after you've weeded, you wet it down, and then it's supposed to help keep weed seed from germinating. It does not have vegetable garden labeling, so it's only meant for your landscape beds that in areas you're not going to plant, but they say it works really well, so they recommend that one for your non-vegetable areas. If you have a vegetable area you're trying to control weeds, you're definitely going to need to check the labels early with their suggestions for what to do before you plant and then after you plant because it's different for the different vegetables on the labels. And then you're probably looking at your preen product, which we do carry in the store, or we have one that people call Truffland. That's a granular that has some vegetable labeling on it as well to help suppress weeds. For spring cleanup work in the yards, there's additional tasks with leaf cleanup. You're cutting back the plants as we start moving into March here with ornamental grasses you may have left up through the winter. Um, the whole top of that is dead, so you need to cut it off so that the new grass can come up through the bottom. Your perennials if their whole top is dead, you're going to need to cut those back so the new plant can come up from the bottom. Um, shrubs, there's some shrub pruning that they may touch on in a different podcast. If you have questions, just call the store. We can try to help you through those questions. Tree pruning, you're probably doing in the winter months as well um, before they leaf out, which refer to one of our other podcasts that was talking about winter landscape interest, and I believe they touched on some pruning in that discussion. And if you have other questions, you can always um, call the store and we can help you through each situation. Then with spring cleanups, you're looking at fixing your edging uh, with like natural edging. You're probably taking a shovel and just cleaning that up a little bit. If you had plastic edging, you're usually looking for cracked edging and just trying to repair that stuff. Um, we carry steel edging at the store. That's a high quality product that holds up over time. And we do sell sticks of that. You may be looking at just trying to reset that in your flower beds with all your spring cleanup work so that things are ready to go for the rest of the season. And then you're also looking at top dressing mulch in your landscape beds. And we sell bulk mulch at the store. It's either dark brown or undyed. It's just a shredded hardwood mulch. We also carry a lot of other mulch in bag choices with cypress and all bark cedar, bark chips in at least two sizes right now. And then there's dark brown mulch in a bag, red mulch in a bag. Um, so there's quite a few choices that you can look at samples that around the store and then um, we can load up a truck or a trailer with bulk mulch. We can arrange deliveries on certain days of the week. Bagged mulches you can buy at the store um, during our store hours. And then the weed preventers we mentioned uh, you may be looking at as well as you do cleanup work through the spring season. For vegetable gardens, early spring people are typically getting the dead debris out of the area if they haven't done that yet. And then they want to add compost to amend the soil before planting. 
Um, compost is a good idea to give your area some organic matter. It's supposed to improve soil composition and soil health, help produce better plants and better plant health and even produce production. Compost products we use are cotton burr. We have it in a three cubic foot bag or a two cubic foot bag as long as it's available. Cattle manure is in a bag. Chicken manure is in a bag. Those are one cubic foot bags. Nature's Blend is another type of compost product, and that's a one cubic foot bag. Those are all by Back to Nature brand. You may be looking at your preen or your trough land in your vegetable gardens through the open areas that won't be planted, but you need to check the labels of those products before you put down those preventers um, because it could interfere with how you plant your vegetable plants. And then vegetable garden fertilizers have specific instructions on the bags for various vegetables before planting and after planting. Um, but the two that are most used in the store are either the Fertilum Gardener Special or the Fertilum Tomato and Vegetable Fertilizers. And then we have been expanding our organic choices for fertilizer in the store. So there is quite a few organic options as well if you prefer organic natural type fertilizers. And then flower containers. Um, when we start getting our bedding plants or our annuals in early spring, you're usually wanting to do your spring flower containers. Prep work for those, you're going to clean out the containers and work in fresh potting soil. You at least want to remove some of it and work in some fresh into the existing. If you're not taking out all of it, you're usually needing to get a little bit of potting soil in there and work it up and then use what we call Osmocote. And that's a slow release fertilizer that you're gonna work into the soil before you plant. And it'll last about three to four months um, so that you get some fertilizer already in there. And then you're gonna add your plants and those will be your cool season annuals like your pansies, your snapdragons, ornamental kale, um, creeping jenny, different combinations. And then for fertilizer, we'd use your Fertilum 20-20-20. That's a water soluble or fertilum blooming and rooting. That's a water soluble as well. And those talk have different directions on the back of the bag. Um, I think it recommends like every seven to 14 days, depending on how often you want to fertilize with your water solubles. And they talk about rotating those two types of fertilizer for additional benefits. So you may find yourself getting the fertilum 20, 20, 20 and the fertilum blooming and rooting and then rotating them at least every couple weeks to give your annual flowers additional fertilizer through the growing season um, to help with more blooming benefits. And then as we get closer to May, you're going to be looking for your warm season annuals to switch out the cool season annuals that may look tired or may not handle the heat as well. And we'll have other plants at that point to change out your pots for the summer season. And container gardening can actually be a four season activity because as we get closer to fall, you may want to change them out again. And then we do winter containers uh, closer to Christmas. So it can be a lot of fun through the year just changing things out with your containers around your yard um, to keep them feeling fresh. And then um, check back with us for more tips as far as your containers and your warm season plantings and what you should be doing in your yard as we get closer to May as some other things will start coming, coming to mind for those times of year. All right. Well, thank you very much, Katie. That was very informative, and uh, we look forward to uh, sitting down with you again when the next season rolls around. If you guys have any questions, feel free to give Katie a call at the garden store or shoot her an email. Her email is on our website, kreniker at bluevillenursery.com, or email us here at podcast at bluevillenursery.com, and we can direct it to the right person. Um, we'll talk to you next time. Thanks.